here at Hillside, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight at our Good Friday service. Uh, this is a very special time of year where we're invited to, to pause, to reflect, and meditate on the truth that we celebrate every Sunday. Um, admittedly, this celebration can, at times, become routine, something we do without thinking, and tonight is meant to interrupt that, uh, to give us a moment to think to experience in some manner what our Savior really went through for us, for you, for me, and for all of us. A few housekeeping notes as we start tonight. Towards the end of the service tonight, there is going to be a clip from the Passion of the Christ that's being played. Uh, so if you're familiar with that, it's not necessarily kid-friendly, perhaps. Uh, there is a kid's service going on downstairs in the powerhouse room. So if you have children in here that you want to send downstairs, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, Miss Sabrina has a great service plan for them. Also, I want to uh, encourage you tonight, like I said, as a time to pause and meditate and reflect on, on what our Savior did for us. So I encourage you to uh, perhaps not only silence your cell phones, but turn them off for tonight. Uh, we're going to be here for about an hour, hour and a half to reflect on what our Savior did for us. I think we can, uh, we can silence our phones and just be present tonight. So traditionally on Good Friday, there's no sermon that's preached. And the reason for this is tonight, it's not a time to preach the good news yet. Our Savior's not here. But of course, the gospel is still implicit in everything we do. And therefore, we can still call it Good Friday. Tonight, we're going to hear the scriptures, and we're going to hear the story. And I hope and pray you'll be able to experience this in a very personal way. Let's pray. Lamb of God, who was slain for us, we come tonight with contrite hearts and acknowledge that it's our sins, of which there are many, that have added to the burden you felt and have nailed you to the cross tonight. We plead for your mercy and your forgiveness. For us, Lord, you tasted the agony of utter darkness that we may not perish but have everlasting life. Your death brings healing to our souls, peace to our minds, and cleansing to our hearts. In faithfulness and humility, we come together at the foot of a cross that should have been ours to stand in its shadow, to hear and feel and sense the story again, to experience anew the suffering you endured for our sake. Grant that we would quietly and humbly come together tonight to gaze and worship at you, the Lamb who was slain for us. Father, we find hope in your words, comfort in your promises, and salvation in your cross by which you have defeated sin and death. And our first reading for tonight is going to be a selection from Psalm 22. says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a postured, and my tongue sticks my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs encompass me. A company of evil doers encircle me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. 
they stare and glow over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up, and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred, beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, <clears throat> and that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what he has heard of us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. <clears throat> and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs 
carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. Like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. We're gonna sing a few more songs right now, but why don't we change our position at this time and stand together if you're willing and able, join us. But just so you know, throughout this night, as we sing these songs and, and worship Jesus together, feel free to sit down if you have to, or stand up if you want, lift your hands up, bow your heads down, whatever you need to do to connect with Jesus tonight as you reflect on his sacrifice for us. So let's just sing together, because it is dark right now, and it's late. I think we should stand for these next couple of songs. So let's sing together, church.
Yeah. 
Street Church. And when he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Jesus came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it that you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. And Jesus said, I am he. They drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servants, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the chief officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back and spoke to the servant girl on duty there and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I'm not. It was cold, and the servants of the officials stood around a fire and had made, they had made to keep him warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple, where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify to that wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, I'm not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster crowed.
Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth, retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard that statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, you will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified.
a scripture reading. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home.
close my mind to ways You love me as I am Precious Redeemer Man that was slain Reading from John chapter 19, verses 28 through 42. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. And a jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the stalk of a hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses. During the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies, so that you also may believe. These things happened so that the scriptures would be fulfilled, not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. 
Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb into which no one had ever been laid because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Here ends your reading. That concludes the readings for tonight. Um, normally at the end of a service, we'd have a, a collection where we'd um, pass the plates and, and, and you give an offering. Tonight we're going to do an offering, but it's not going to be of any kind of monetary value. What I'd like you to offer are your, your prayers, your concerns, the things that, 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 that you really need to leave at the foot of the cross this evening. All of us are struggling this year. All of us have had things that, that continue to come back and haunt us, sickness and uh, death that we've had throughout the year, and just continuing sins that we commit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, right? And the truth is not in us. Yet if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Many places in the Bible, it tells us that we should come on to Christ, come on to God and, and give him, give him our, our prayers and our concerns. Let me just share a couple of those with you. First from Philippians chapter 4. Do not be anxious Paul writes us, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What is it that you need to, um, to be known to God? Make known to him. God, we handed out some pieces of paper. If you haven't had an opportunity to do that yet, Let's just take a few moments and pick them out, get a pen from in front of you there, and, and write down these things that you need to give to the cross. And I'll continue reading a couple of things. I'm from John 14, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. From Isaiah 41.10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then finally from Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly at heart, in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden, my burden is light. As you reflect and pray, we're just going to sing this song over you. you to write down your, your burdens to him. And my soul finds rest Where it makes no sense There the blood sets
Take a while. We're going to read them all now. That's right there, everybody. Actually, God took our, our sins and our concerns to the cross. They're gone forever, right? We can give them to him, and, and he takes them for us. So what I'm going to do with this, now as we close the service, I'm going to take them out onto the courtyard where we have a fire pit, and I'm going to light them up. <laughs> and burn them, and they'll be gone forever. Amen? Amen? All of these concerns, these things that you carry, I'll hold you back and drag you down. Let God lift them off of your shoulders and give them to him right here at the foot of the cross. We just leave them here with him so you can take them forever. Let's pray that prayer that, that Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, glory forever and ever. Deliver us from evil. Let's burn these and um, be gone, Satan, from us. Amen. If you'd like to join me, that's where we're going to go now. Um, and then we can wish each other God's peace after that. So, um, it's not too blowing out there. I was going to build a big bonfire and throw them on, but it was like 30 mile an hour wind. So I think that was a very good idea. We'll burn the church down. So I'm just going to burn this, though, okay? So join me if you'd like. Um, receive the benediction as we go forth from tonight, too. May the Lord bless you and I and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and, and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us this peace that passes understanding as we lay our cares before him. Amen. quite as elaborate as I was hoping with a big fire, but 